Around eight months ago, I've made a video when I decided to crossbreed a simple Caridinia shrimp, crystal red and crystal black shrimp with Taiwan bee and pinto shrimps in order to increase the population of my Taiwan bees and pinto shrimps and improve their genetics. I simply put a few females of crystal red and crystal black shrimps into the pinto tanks and let them breed. In a little while they made a lot of babies which are F1 hybrids or they also called Michelin's. Some of the Michelin's babies had a very interesting patterns, but some of them look like a simple crystal black and crystal red shrimps, but all of them have a hidden Taiwan B or Pinto genes which should be appearing in next generation. So I moved them out from that tank and I separate them into another tank where they grew up to adulthood. So today in this video I'm gonna tell you everything what happened from that moment until today and I'll give you a full update on this project. So here at the bottom of the rack, I used to have my coal tank before and I closed it down about a few months ago and I still didn't remove the tank, <laughs> I'm still lazy to do that. So I put a lot of F1 hybrids in, into this tank and they've been here for quite some time together with my coal shrimps. So when I closed this tank down, I moved all the coals upstairs into this brand new tank here and I separated all the, all the F1 Michelin's into that little tank and they've been here for quite some time. So let me start to feed them and I will show you around this tank. And here you go guys, this is my Michelin tank and i just tell you a little history about this tank. I put a lot of Michelin's here and once they grow, I start to separate some good looking females from here. But I still left a few females here and they managed to get buried and, and get some babies here. And some of them are Taiwan bee and pinto shrimps, not many of them but probably like five, six, seven of them here. Um, so I would say if you mix Michelin's together, they still can make you some Taiwan bees and pinto shrimps, but percentage is very low, it's roughly about 25%. So if you want to increase the percentage of Taiwan bee and pinto shrimps, you need to separate some of the females and move them into a pinto tank. And this is what I'm gonna show you in a minute. I have a tank where I have my pinto and uh, females of Michelin's. So you can see some babies are quite beautiful here. And take a look at this baby. It looks like a galaxy or galaxy tiger shrimp very beautiful baby yeah so they can make you these babies as well so this baby for example is just a normal uh, panda shrimp and this baby is like a dark red panda yeah so you can see you can have a plenty of different type of babies and some Michelin's here look quite nice and uh, take a look at this one for example uh, this one is look like a fancy tiger shrimp so they, the, the some of them look like fancy tiger and some of them have like a spotted head it's like a crystal red shrimp but has some spots on the head or crystal black with a spotted head so they, they kind of look like reverse pinto shrimp you can see also you have some new caridinia here i just don't don't have any place for them so i put them in this tank this tank is quite small and it's, it's not it's not very successful so i had some like maybe three buried shrimps and normally three buried shrimps can make you like at least like 50 babies all together i don't see 50 babies i see like 20 of them so that's because the, this tank is not so so big and and the baby survival rate probably is very low here. So I'm planning to break it down and close it completely and place the shrimps to another tank. And this is what I'm gonna show you in a second. And this is my shrimp tank where I cross breeding my Michelin females with Pinto males. And I'm just feeding them now and they all should be come out and I'm gonna show you all the babies that they're making. Guys, take a look at the shrimps. All these uh, galaxy and Pinto shrimps ro roaming around, they are all males and all this crystal red and crystal black with uh, different interesting patterns like this one for example they are Michelin's so they are all cross breeding together and they're making a lot of interesting babies and take a look at this baby here for example this is like a like panda or a little pinto baby so they're supposed to having like 50% of Michelin's and 50% of Taiwan B and pinto babies and I would say that's about right because I count the baby roughly and I would say that about 50% of like Taiwan bees and pintos and 50% of Michelin's. So you can see this one, for example, is look like a pinto, very interesting pinto. This one is look like a King Kong or pinto shrimp. Very, very, very beautiful baby. They all came from these Michelin's. So basically they are kind of like a free babies. And take a look at this one. This, this, is, this one is like, even look like a, a galaxy tiger. Uh, galaxy tiger shrimp yeah that's exactly like a galaxy tiger so they all came from Michelin's and this is what what is interesting about this project so these shrimps which came from Michelin's they are hundred percent of Taiwan B and, and Pinto shrimp so there's no difference between the normal Taiwan B which came from Taiwan B and Pinto 
with Taiwan B who came from Michelin's. They're not gonna give you any different shrimps if they cro crossbreed with another Taiwan B or Pinto shrimps. They're only gonna make you Pinto shrimps. So this is the beauty of this project. You can increase the population and at the same time you increase in the genetics because the, that genetics from crystal black or crystal red shrimps which crossbreeding uh, in the beginning with Pinto shrimp, it will pass to to next generation. So this uh, F2 generation, yeah, you can see on your screen, this is babies of F2 generation. So all the Taiwan bees and Pinto shrimps, they, they have like 25% of genetics from crystal red and crystal black shrimps. That's making them a little bit hardier and a little bit more prolific because the crystal black and crystal red shrimps, they are more prolific and hardier than the Taiwan bee and Pinto shrimps. So this way we are kind of improved genetics and if you do it all the time, if you cross this Taiwan bees again with crystal red, make some Michelin's and do it again, you're gonna improve it even more. So what is my plan now guys? I'm gonna keep separating these Michelin females and put them in my main tanks so they can help me to produce more Pintos and uh, more Taiwan bee shrimps so I can improve genetics and increase the population of my Taiwan bee and Peter shrimps at the same time. You can see I have even few blue balls here so let's take a look around again. So I have uh, another blue ball, another little shrimp here. Oh that's that's look like a uh, like a galaxy tiger shrimp. Let me zoom and see. Yeah that's it's like galaxy tiger shrimp. So it's very interesting shrimp place I have here. A lot of like pandas and king hogs, but a lot of also interesting shrimps. And this is all depends what Michelin is like, look like. So some Michelin which look like uh, uh, fancy tigers, for example, they make you uh, like galaxy tiger shrimps. And Michelin who look like a, like this one, for example, a simple crystal red, crystal black shrimp, they give us like a normal pandas and king kongs. So this is all depends on the Michelin patterns. So I'm gonna prioritize the Michelin's with the interesting patterns first and I'm gonna mix them with my Taiwan bees and Pinto shrimps. So what I'm going to do today, I'm gonna to close this tank down and break it down. The, the, simply because I'm, I'm planning to put a little shrimp rack here and I'm planning to put this two new shrimp tank here, which I've just made it. So they, they, they are going to be on this shrimp rack and I have to replace this tank. So what's this plan for today is to move the shrimps into this tank. So what's happened with this tank is uh, when I was away, I think my friend uh, accidentally overfeed that. It's not his fault because I told him to feed uh, one piece of food every day. But because the temperature in the room was very low, I switched off the heating and the temperature was like 10, 12 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, shrimps become very slow and not very active and they don't eat too much. So when he feed them normally, they, they didn't need it as much as before. The food started to pollute the water and the shrimp start to die I think so when I came back it wasn't as many shrimps as I left so I'm gonna get rid of this tank as well eventually once I have these two tanks on this rack cycled I'm gonna take get rid of this as well I'm not happy about this because it's quite tall tank and this has very little surface area at the bottom so it's not very wide and not very deep tank it's very tall it's like 40 centimeters tall and this has some very nasty black beard algae as well. Temporary this tank gonna be a new home for, for our Michelin and all of these shrimps uh, which I'm like a kind of mixed shrimps are going to be to be in this tank. It's not too many shrimps in this tank so they're gonna be all right together and this is only temporary. In a couple of weeks I have this new tank to be cycled and I'm gonna move a lot of shrimps in this tank. It's gonna be a very huge my mixed tank. So this tank probably gonna be my high grade galaxy shrimp tank. I'm gonna separate some of the good looking high grade galaxy shrimps. I have some of them here and I have some of them here as well. You might see some of them kind of quite decent look. Guys, take a look at the shrimps I found on my, my Michelin tank. I think it's look like a black galaxy tiger shrimp. Very, very beautiful little baby. Okay guys, take a look at them. I took them out, placed them in this little box. And there's a lot of Michelin's here. And I also have six of the Taiwan Bee and Pinto shrimps. Some of them look very nice. Some of them very good, yeah. So now it's turn to take these shrimps out and put them in this mix tank here. Let's do it now.
Now we took all the Galaxy Pinto shrimps from that tank and take a look at them. Have quite a lot of them, lots of babies, lots of lots of shrimps. Yeah, so looking good now. Take a quick look. Yeah, looking cool, huh? A lot of them. I didn't expect so many, you know. You never know how many shrimps because they're hiding a lot. But yeah, there's lots of lots of babies as well. I didn't take all the babies, I didn't take any blue balls and red balls. I left them in the tank because they have to go in another tank anyway. Let's acclimate them and put them in the tanks. Okay, we just completed acclimating our Michelings. Take a look at them, so many. Now the most exciting moment is to put them in the tank. Ta-da! Go, you free! Oh my god, so many of them, go! Yeah! Nice! Oh, they get into the glass straight away on the soil. Yeah, this is your new home, guys. I'll be enjoying this temporary home, I think until we, we've got new, new tanks to cycle. So now it's time to release them into the new home as well. Take a look at them. So many of shrimps as well, many, many babies. I left a lot of babies as well in this tank. I didn't want to take very little babies. So they're gonna grow up here. Once they grow up in a, in a few weeks, I'm gonna put them in this tank as well. Okay, let's put them inside this tank. Okay, exciting moment. A little bit tricky to do it with one hand and film. But that's fine. Oh, take a look at this. Beautiful shrimps. This is your new home. Go. Go, you're free now. <laughs> tank a little bit overpopulated now with these shrimps inside so there's, there's, there's a lot of them so tomorrow I'm gonna feed these shrimps I'm gonna show you them but once this tank cycled we're gonna move some of them in this tank most of them and then they leave the most beautiful shrimp here create some beautiful population of shrimps in this tank this is gonna be like mix Taiwan B and Peter's tank and this is next day guys and take a look at these shrimps they're gorgeous, they're so beautiful. I'm just put a little bit of bacterial powder at the front of the tank so they all came out here. So they're all active and all happy to be here. And I'm having fun to mix my shrimps and it's like in the fish aquarium. We don't want to see the same kind of fish. You just want to mix and see lots of colors. And the same for the shrimp tanks. I like to see the lots of colorations of shrimps, lots of different patterns. And you never know what they can produce you, you know, that's the, that's the thing. So when you see the babies, you, it's like always a surprise, you know. You see the baby and you see like, oh, this is good baby. This is like, a, this is red galaxy. Why is here? I don't have red galaxy here. You know, and this is cool because you never know what you're gonna get. This is what good about Cardinia shrimps. You can mix them and you got like lots of different colors, lots of different patterns. With new Cardinia, it's like it's difficult because you cannot mix them. You can, but you, you got the wild shrimps from mixing them. Normally, I have lots of improvements when I mix my shrimps. My next generation normally more beautiful than the previous one, believe me or not. But you know, some people commenting me like, oh, you're mixing shrimps, you're gonna get very bad uh, babies and things like that. But I think that's because they don't know about the shrimps anything. If you mix Caridinia shrimps like Pintas and uh, Taiwan shrimps, you never get any, any lower grade shrimps. The, the worst shrimp you can get is Blue Boss, but not many of them. Normally you get different type of pintas with different patterns. Guys, let's give them a, a proper food now, so they all come here to, to eat the food and we're gonna take a look. Here you go, I just gave them a stick of food and look at them, they're so excited, yeah, so they're super hungry. I think the more shrimps you have in the tank, the quicker they get hungry, because there's not 
enough to buy a film for them if there's a lot of them. All the time I have a comment about my moss, the people asking me what type of moss I have and uh, I know it's a lot of newcomers people coming to see my videos and you're always welcome and I'm very happy to see you here. I'm gonna just tell you again this moss is Fessy Dance Moss and this moss is a flame moss and this is Anubius um, on the on the chala wood so this is what plants in this tank and in case you're interested so what I normally do is I normally cut the coconut shell and then I attach the moss with the with the cotton thread and guys this tank is already one year old and it's time to change the soil in underground filter box because the pH is start to creeping up already and it's not good for shrimps so I'm planning to cycle new soil and replace this UGF box with a fresh one guys take a look at this shrimp here it's very interesting shrimp I have in this tank. So this shrimp called half cider shrimp because take a look at here. On the half of the body it has uh, different patterns. So one side of the body has like nothing and another side has some patterns. This is called half cider shrimp and uh, it's very rare shrimp, very rare mutation. And there is a very difficult to breed them and not many people breed them. So, but I, I want to try maybe one day. I have another few shrimps in like this in my other tank but the shrimps is very very interesting so she she's she also very brave look at her she get inside just oh my god she's very brave yeah yeah she's very interesting maybe she can come in the front again so i can show her again so this is what you can get when you're mixing shrimps you can get lots of lots of different patterns even sometimes you get like a mutation like one side one patterns another side another patterns yeah yeah take another look at here yes very rare shrimp it's very difficult to breed them because uh, they can have like a double gender and they can be a uh, male and female in the same shrimp and if they're female and male in the same shrimp they, they won't breed yeah so there's a chance of that and that's why you know, they might not be breeding they might breed truly so if you if i have few of them i will try to breed them because if if i breed them i would be like super happy imagine to have a colony of shrimps like that that would be cool right okay it is the next day and i just installed this little rack in the corner and instead completely breaking down this tank i decided to use it actually guys to cycle my ugf boxes in some of my tanks, soil start to be expiring in UGF boxes, so it's a good idea to cycle your soil prior to changing the box. So this little tank works great to cycle my boxes, so I'm gonna use it for that. So these two tanks are ready to put in my little rack, but there is only one thing missing is, uh, is the antelay. I normally use a cheap yoga mat which I got from Amazon for antelay. So, and the best way to cut this yoga mat is to place your tank on top and cut it with a sharp knife. Okay, the tanks are in place and take a look at this little shrimp rack looking great huh? and I made it the same level with this tank which is looking nice and neat so the only one thing missing now is the light and I'm gonna make the same DIY light which I normally do with aluminium profile and LED strip so I'm gonna show you how to do it Okay, our light is complete and it's just a simple aluminium LED housing with LED strip light inside and I also put some electrical tape at either end just to prevent leaking of the light to the side of the tank. Let me switch one light on and I'll show you how it looks. Here you go guys and I also put electrical tape at the front of the light. The reason for that is when when it's no tape you can see this little strip light strip at the front and it's really annoying me when you look at the tank and you see that with this tape you don't see anything so this is how I make DIY lights so now let's install them on my tanks and guys take a look at this rack with the lights on looking cool huh 
and I'm very happy with the slides. They're very easy to use. So basically, if you want to do something inside your tank, you simply can move them to the back or you simply can take them and put them on the floor or put them in another tank if you, if you want to light up another tank. And for me, it's good because if I do a video, for example, I can put them, move them around, put them in another tank and make it more lights and then make a video of the shrimps for you, yeah. And guys, because I'm using very bright LED lights, the brightest lights I can get my hands on, the two lights normally enough for one tank. So I'm gonna leave a link for the parts I use for the aluminum housing for LED strip so you can make it yourself if you want. Also, if you want to find out how I made these glass aquariums, check out my previous video. The cool thing is all my light is connected to a smart plug. I have a smart plug for these tanks and a smart plug for my shrimp rack. So I can switch it on and off and change my timer. You see the timer says that they, they like gonna switch off 22 30 so I can change it anywhere in the world I can switch it on and off so for example stream rack I can switch it off switch it on from my phone very cool huh and guys I'm very excited about these tanks in my next video you're gonna see how I setting them up and I want to try something new I want to do a planted aquarium with a thick soil at the bottom so something which I never try on my channel before and if you don't want to miss my future videos please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet and please give this video a like if you enjoyed it it helps me a lot and thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one